This might be the future of computing. This is what the world could look like with Magic Leap, a new technology which stands to upend the way we work, communicate, and play. We've created a digital light field signal that mimics how the world, uh, the, the visual part of the world, like really interfaces or talks to your brain. Roni Abovitz is CEO of Magic Leap, the secretive startup making synthetic digital images like this that merge with real spaces. The company isn't in Silicon Valley, New York, or even Austin. It's in southern Florida. That's why heavy hitters from tech, entertainment, and the arts regularly make the pilgrimage to their Fort Lauderdale offices to be wowed by the Magic Leap experience. You probably don't really get it until you actually do it. Google has invested. CEO Sundar Pichai sits on the board. And earlier this year, Alibaba led a $794 million investment, part of possibly the largest sea round in history. All that, and we still don't know that much about Magic Leap. But Wired has an exclusive early peek. You've heard of VR, you've heard of AR. Well, Roni is working on something that he calls MR, mixed reality. That's a way of tricking the brain to think that digital light signals made in Magic Leap goggles are as real as the world around us. So how does Magic Leap do it? Your brain is like a graphics processor, and we basically tried to clone what that signal is. We made a digital version of that, and we talked to the GPU of the brain. Wired tried it, and it is amazing. Mountains appear to grow out of tables, and schools of jellyfish float on ceilings. But Magic Leap wouldn't let us show you any more than this. Inside their Florida offices, robots are calibrating optics. So we can move it around you. Engineers are brainstorming games. All around you. And deals with studios are being hammered out. Talking about demonstrating live sports. All to bring Roni's vision to reality. And to the rest of us. At the heart of the technology is this photonics chip. Whatever you do, don't call it a lens. Magic Leap won't, and it says it won't disclose what the final goggles will look like, or even if they're goggles. It's a three-dimensional wafer-like component that has very small structures in it, and they manage the flow of photons that ultimately create a digital light field signal. Sounds complicated, doesn't it? Even the people building this technology have a hard time explaining what it is and what it's like to experience it. <laughs> this might sound a little strange, but I think it's like dreaming with your eyes open. You're just so convinced that what you're seeing in front of you that you know is sort of unreal. You know that it's, it just, it feels so real. Everest conquered, the New Zealander Edmund Hillary got his first mail and congratulatory telegrams. I think of the, the metal and chrome that we make is awesome, right? I mean, it reflects photons into your retina and does all these crazy, crazy awesome things. But the most important thing, the most important thing, is what happens when you put it on. <laughs> Magic Leap's potential for gaming and entertainment is obvious. But Roni is already thinking about how it might replace all of our other screens, too. So I can conjure a tablet, I can conjure many televisions, I can conjure a home theater. But it could be a while before Magic Leap conjures up its first product, a wearable. The company won't commit to a release date. And there's competition, like Meta, and Microsoft's HoloLens, which are already shipping developer kits. Roni doesn't mind. He's willing to wait until Magic Leap is perfect. Then, he says, computing in space will feel completely natural. That, to me, is the real Magic Leap. Like, you've, you've crossed through the looking glass, you're on the other side, and there's talking white rabbits, and Alice is there, and it's, it's pretty cool. Or maybe it's jellyfish pulsing across the ceiling, for now, you'll have to take a magic leap of faith. <laughs>